Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I'm going over is I just wanted to show you, um, you know, just a few tools that's needed for when you're going into a house to do service. All right, you're on the service call, you might have a pouch you're bringing in, but you don't need a crazy amount of tools to bring in the house. You don't have to be carrying, you know, 30, 40 pounds on you or 20 pounds on you, um, you know, lugging all the tools around. Okay. Uh, these are the general tools that I'm walking into a, a house with or a building, you know, business with. Um, you can have a six-in-one screwdriver or maybe a ten-in-one screwdriver. You know, I only use one of those, you know, at a time typically. A thermostat screwdriver or a longer version of the thermostat screwdriver. There's pliers on the end of these wire strippers and cutters. All right, you have the wire stripping function, you have the wire cutting, and then you have the crimping. Uh, area right here for your spade terminals. Use these constantly. All right, your multimeter, huge big deal. Make sure you have that. Make sure you have a HVAC multimeter and you know how to use it properly and safely. You want to have alligator clips on your on your probes and to be able to take them off if you need you know you need to. But you want to be able to have them on. Jumper wires to be able to jump from uh, one terminal to another. I, sometimes I also take in those uh, the mag jumpers uh, for the thermostat so you can jump from one terminal to the other um, without having to disconnect the wires uh, but in most cases I just use the alligator clips a service magnet for the door switches on furnaces um, I typically take this one in I also use some electrical tape if the uh, door switch is too big for the magnet you can get magnets for free right out of a microwave or a computer uh, you can get the neodymium magnets out of the computers, but uh, or you can buy just a service magnet, just made specifically to cover over door switches. You know, whatever you want. You could use a. Make sure you have a flashlight that has like multi-position. You can set this in the ground, just shine it wherever you want. You want to have maybe another little tiny flashlight to take with you, just in case. Uh, basically, nine times out of ten, I'm going to be able to figure out the general gist of what the problem is with these tools, okay? And then I can go to my truck and get the next specific item that I need. Maybe it's a gas manometer, um, you know, for checking a furnace, or maybe it's the refrigerant gauges, or whatever it may be. You know, you need a, 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 some smaller set of tools to figure out what the problem is, but then you need a, a wide range of tools to fix it. You know, we're, we have a lot of tools that we have in that truck, you know, in order to fix the problem. This is just like the initial diagnosis, the initial like, hey, you know, we're, we're heading in this direction, and then you go out to your truck, you get some more tools. But all I'm saying is, you know, you can have more tools in this, obviously, um, in your pouch when you go in. But you don't need to take, like, a crazy amount of tools in every time when you're trying to figure out a problem. So, And just to, so you know, depending on what the customer says, say they say that the cooling is working, but it's just not getting cold in the house. Obviously, I might start with a temp sensor as well. Um, and a multimeter just to check out my temp difference between the return and supply or if it's heating or something like that I can do a temp rise. Alright, hope you enjoyed yourself. See you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.